Go ahead. So when we talked earlier, you said you weren't going to sit back, you weren't going to, because that wouldn't help you for the rest of the season. How were you guys able to stay on the tack to propel going forward to help you guys for the rest of the year? Well, I mean, I think the thing for us, right, I mean, the most important thing for us is the ball. The longer we can have the ball, the longer we don't have to defend. The longer we, don't have, longer we have the ball, the longer we have to sit back. So that's, everything's predicated on that. And, you know, look, the whole goal was to be in an environment where we're never going to see this pressure and this in our league. So how could we get better in this environment? And that was really just the key. And, you know, we did okay. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. But at the end of the day, look, it was, it was, a, good, it was a good all around for us. So we, we have no complaints. You mentioned there, there's like a little work to be done. Like, where, what area, what area do you see having to improve to be able to actually beat this team for the next time? Or you all play? <laughs> Could it be giving them a good run today? I don't know about I, I don't know about beating this team, man. But you know, you know we'll just like uh, come out and do our best, man. That's all. You know, I don't. I never ask for anything more than that from the guys. I never want guys to be like thinking they gotta have the best game of their life. It's about our our philosophy here is: can you be one percent better every day? Can you just improve every day? And Whatever turns out on the day, it turns out on the day, and we just get back to work. So, yeah. Second 45, Coach, you had a lot of the trialists out there that you were getting extra looks at. Some of the impressions, I know that you have the like, two groups of trialists that you really are kind of focusing on here. What feedback uh, from looking at them in that second 45 are you taking with these trialists that you brought in? What are, you, what are some of your observations of that group? Well, I think... Mm -hmm. Some of them did, a, did, them, did themselves justice. I mean, um, you know, the nice thing is two of those, one of the guys that started right back, he came from the open tryout, right? So give the kid all the credit in the world. Uh, he started it right back. And then, you know, two of the guys that were in the, um, in the open trial played in the second half. And to be honest, two of the, two of the three are, we're still considering. So all props to them. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's enough guys that it's, we feel good about what we're looking at, but we're also not satisfied, and we, we know that we still need to find higher level players. So, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And having a guy like So out there against pretty much a first choice Atlanta United 11, they're at, at, at right back, going up against all of that, like Andrew Gutman, the Cho Chole coming down the left hand side. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's putting him into the fire right out of yeah. the box. Yeah, I mean, look, the kid is, uh, came from Drury, it's Division II school. Um, this is the biggest environment I've ever been in. Did he make a mistake? Yeah. Did he not? But all that's expected. So, but what we what we walk away with is when we when we evaluate guys because you know we're a little bit different. That obviously we don't have the resources and all that. But when we look at guys, how close are they to how we want to do it? Not that they're just good players, but how close are they to how we want to do it? So then we can refine them because it's not about I, my philosophy at the pro level. It's about because every player before they knew me at the pro level are good enough to be here. So it's how do we refine them and how do we give them opportunities to get better as individuals, but also how do we get them to understand our way because our way is very specific because there's a lot of good players that just can't come here to play because they're not either willing to learn the way we want to do it or they just don't fit. And so we, we're never about, well, you're not good enough. It just doesn't work. What did you think about the, the house today with over 6,000 there from a lot of folks coming from Atlanta and having the, you know, the Chattanooga support there? What did you think about the house today? Look, I mean, too, as I told the players, right, some, some, some uh, environments are too big for some players. They just can't handle it. And our guys were fine in the environment, which was good, even the trials, which is good. Um, and to have the support, right? I mean, just when I was coming here watching – you know, Chattanooga fans walking through downtown in their, in their gear and then watching the Atlanta United guys, fans walking. That's what a football town needs to be, right? And that's what it needs to be, and hopefully that just continues to grow. And that's, like, so important that, that you have that feeling. Um, you said you might want to sign some better players still high caliber, but do you feel right now with the team that you have from last year's season? I mean, you guys had a great season last year. Do you think you can still exceed the results you had last year with the team currently? No. Or, no. We're not even close. Yeah, we're not even, we're, we're not like, I mean, we have 10 signed guys. Excuse me, let me, let me get my numbers right because we signed some guys. So we have, yeah, we have, we have 11, or, 11 or 12 signed guys. We have two guys that are on academy contracts that play in the second half. 
So we got about 14, 15 guys, and we still feel like we need to find uh, probably two, three, four, four or five more starters to what give position, ourselves a chance. What positions do you think you need to improve? Uh, we need to improve in center back. We need to improve in the wing. We need to improve in the midfield. So, yeah, we still got a lot of work to do. Thank you. Yeah. Coach, how big, uh, how big of an opportunity uh, was it there for your players, younger and older, to measure them, uh, themselves against like MLS-level players? It's always, it's always a, like... It's twofold. It's always a good way to measure yourself, but you always have to put that in the right frame of mind because, let's be honest, when those guys go out and play in Miami, they're going to play way different than they played us, right? So that's also the reality too, right? So we're no fools here, but at the end of the day, we didn't hurt ourselves and we didn't do ourselves, we, we didn't do ourselves any, anything negative. So, What are some of your younger guys taking from the older guys as far as being able to mature about the game yeah for us man it's all about we have a culture that we want and that's that's a that's the phrase that's overused and misused but I have a, I have a master's degree in, in sports leadership so leadership is like super important we believe every player is a leader we every player leads in their own way every player has the, every player has a voice doesn't mean we always agree but every player has a voice and they're respected and that's how we grow and that's like super important to build the culture and everyone holds everybody accountable. Not because they have to be jerks. I'm sure you guys have been around. Well, guys are yelling. No. Yelling and screaming does zero. What we do is we build the individual, build the person, and we build this connectivity that when they come together, even in hard conversations, they still respect and they still can grow together. And that's how we try to build everything. Yeah. So where is that connectivity right now, having to start camp early and get early starts on things? Where do you think that connectivity is? With, that, with the guys that are signed and the guys that return, it's very good. But the guys that are on trial, they have no idea. They think they do, but they have no idea. So, Speaking of the, one of those signings, Gene talked about him coming in, being a winner. Yeah. Obviously a preseason game, but still first game action for him. What did he bring? Yeah, I mean, look, when we start, when we, nothing against our goalkeepers we had last year because one of those goalkeepers is like family to me, right? He's like, I'm really close with him. He's really important to me. And that's probably one of the hardest decisions I had to do was let him go. Uh, and even to this day, it's like when I call, I still talk to him. It's like, that was really difficult. I'll say of all the players I've ever had to let go, that was the hardest one. But I knew we had to get, change our player profile. And that, and be honest, our, our play pro, player profile was, can we find an MLS player sitting on the bench that was, this, that was not happy? That was our first for a goalkeeper. So we went there and then we went championship. Couldn't get any of those guys. Went USL1, couldn't get any of those guys. Gene's the best player, was the best goalkeeper in our league. He's been that way for two years, and we got it. So that was always the, uh, the way we started, right? That's how we, that was our focus. And, you know, look, I love the kid. I mean, I don't know him well. I've known him for 10 days, right? But I love what he brings to the team and his leadership and his ability, and he fits our physical profile for a goalkeeper.